What is up YouTube, IDM here, and welcome back to another video. So I'm gonna show you guys how to get RetroArc on iOS 15. This works on the iPhone and it works on the iPad. Now I'm gonna be doing this on my iPhone. I might do a dedicated video specifically for the iPad. So if I end up doing that, I will leave a link in the description, but it's virtually the same thing for both devices. Now RetroArc is incredibly complex, but it's also incredibly powerful and it allows you to play tons of different types of retro games on your iOS device. From anything from Atari to NES to Super Nintendo up to PlayStation 1 games, which is freaking cool. Now this is going to be a long video because there's a lot to show and RetroArc, like I said, is, is very complex. So if there's any specific point in this video you need to jump to, check out the description. I'll put timestamps down there if you need to jump around at all. I'm also going to mention that RetroArc does require a computer, as we will need the alt store to install the application. If you guys don't have a computer, there is a great alternative called Web Arcade. I recently did a tutorial on how that website works. Uh, so if you guys want to do retro gaming and you don't have a computer, check out the link in the description. Web Arcade is seriously cool. But anyways, to kick this off, the first thing that you're going to need on your device on iOS 15 is the Alt Store. Okay, now to get Alt Store on your device, it's incredibly easy. All you got to do is come to the Alt Store's official website. I'll leave the link for this down in the description. But once you come to this website, you can just download Alt Store for Mac or for Windows. Also, if in this tutorial I don't cover something you're looking for, like if you're on Windows, if you go to the FAQ page here, it literally gives you step-by-step -step how to get Alt Store up and running on Mac and also on Windows. So if something doesn't make sense in this tutorial, literally just keep this page open and just do each step-by-step -step on the website and you will get Alt Store up and running. So I just wanted to add that real quick. Uh, but anyways, we're on the Mac, so we just download the Mac version here. Downloads as a zip file. You can go ahead and open up your downloads and just click on the zip file, and then you can just drag and drop the alt server into your applications. Now, I already have it in there, so I'm not going to do it again. But once you have it in your applications, you can just double click it and open it, and you'll notice that it shows up in your status bar. That means the alt server is running. Now, at this point, it might have you update the mail plugin and to make sure that the mail plugin is running, all you gotta do is make sure that your mail app is open and in the background, and then you can go to the preferences for mail and go to manage plugins and just verify that the alt plugin.mail bundle is checked on. If it's not, just click the check mark and then apply and restart mail. That does have to be enabled for the alt server and alt store to work. And then, like I said, just make sure that your mail application is open and in the background so don't close it out just minimize it and make sure it's open that is required anytime you want to re-sign an application your computer must be on and the mail app open in the background now the next thing i like to do is enable my iphone or my ipad to use the alt server wirelessly over my wi-fi this is incredibly nice so to do this the first time just plug your device in and then within a finder window just make sure that show this iPhone or iPad when on Wi-Fi is checked on. This allows you to connect to that device wirelessly. And this also allows Alt Server and the Alt Store to work wirelessly as well. As long as your computer is on and the mail app is open, you can install apps with Alt Store and you can re-sign your apps with Alt Store. Also, I want to mention the more you use the Alt Store, the more it's just going to automatically refresh those applications any chance it has. So as long as you keep your computer on regularly and have that mail app open, it will just re-sign your applications um, on its own, and it's really quite convenient. Another thing I wanted to add is that with the Alt Store, if you have multiple devices, you can only use one Apple ID per device. So what I did is I created a, a second Apple ID and it's literally just for the alt store. It's incredibly easy to do. Just make an Apple ID and then you must enroll it in the beta software program. Uh, I've never mentioned that, but you have to sign up that Apple ID for this public beta software program. It's completely free. It allows you to use beta versions of iOS or iPad OS or whatever it is. And uh, that's what's going to allow you to use the alt store. 
So on my iPad, I have a burner Apple ID, one I just made up, that has my seven day signing period, just like everybody else. And then on my iPhone, I'm using my paid developer account, which does cost $100 per year, but that allows me to sign applications for one full year on my iPhone. And that's how I have Alt Store on two separate devices as I have two separate Apple IDs. And I just wanted to talk about that very quickly. Now that you have Alt Server up and running, all you gotta do is click on Install Alt Store and then choose your device. Like I said, it'll show up here if either A, you have it plugged in, or B, you have it show on Wi-Fi. So just choose one of those two, and then it's super easy. All you gotta do is sign in with your Apple ID and password. This is 100% safe. It's literally used just to sign the applications so that you can use them. Like I said, if needed, just make a burner Apple ID and you should be good to go. So all you gotta do is enter in your credentials here and then click on install, and then the Alt Store will install onto your device. Another thing I wanted to add here real quick about Alt Store is after you click on install, if you don't see it on the home screen of your device, just do a reboot or power it off and power it back on. That just is a bug in iOS where if you install a third party application, Sometimes it doesn't show up on the home screen, so if you don't see it after installing it, just reboot your device and then you will see it on the home screen. Okay, now like I said, if the Alt Store does not show up on your home screen after you use your computer to install it, what you need to do is volume up, volume down, and then hold the side button, slide to power off, so turn off your iPhone or iPad, and then turn it back on, so power it back up, and then the Alt Store should, should show up on your home screen. Now at this point, what you can do is you can go into the Alt Store and you need to go to the Settings tab at the bottom there and sign in with your Apple ID once again uh, on the Alt Store. Again, it's using your Apple ID to side load and sign these third-party applications and that's just, uh, that's just how it does it. It does it with your own Apple ID, so it's perfectly safe. But now that you have installed the Alt Store, you're all signed in, you're ready to go, what we're gonna do is download the RetroArch application. So to do this, we're gonna go to Safari and we're gonna go to the RetroArch website. Link for this is in the description as well. And once you come here, what you can do is just click on the side menu there. And I do wanna mention that if you guys have any questions about anything that I don't cover in this video, there is a ton of information on the website. So we're just gonna click on download and RetroArch is a cross-platform um, program basically or application so you can use it on iOS, you can use it on Android, you can use it on your computer. I'm pretty sure you can even use it on your Apple TV or your Xbox. So it's pretty crazy. But anyways, there's two different types of downloads. There's a nightly and there's a stable version. I like to just do the stable version so I click on that button and then just click on whatever is the newest version available. So for me, it's 1.9.14. Basically, whatever has the highest number is gonna be the newest version. So we're just gonna click on that one there, and we're gonna choose what we're installing it on. We're doing it on Apple. So as you can see, it, it supports just a ton of stuff. There's Android. I think you can even get it on a Nintendo Switch, PlayStation, Windows, so on and so forth. So we're gonna do Apple, and we're gonna do iOS ARM 64. And as you can see, this is the .IPA. Now the application is pretty large in size. It's 397 megabytes. So just click on download by clicking on it and then download on the pop-up. And then you can go into your downloads by clicking on that button there and you can see it downloading. Like I said, depending on how quick your internet is, this might take some time. So just be patient. Now I've already done it, so I'm just gonna cancel that out. You can see here I have the .IPA. So to locate it, I'm gonna click the magnifying glass here and I already have this open. And as you can see, here is the .ipa within my download section in my files application. So from here, I can just force touch on the .ipa, click on share, and choose the alt store. Now, if for whatever reason you don't see the alt store in this share sheet, just go to more and then scroll down and you will see the alt store available there. All you gotta do is click on alt store and it will begin installing it through the alt store. I've already done this, so I'm not gonna do it because it does take a while. So like I said, you will see a, uh, a download progress bar at the top of the alt store there as it's installing it. And like I said, it's a very large application, so it takes 
probably like five to 10 minutes or so to actually install it onto your device. So just be patient, set your device down, do something for a few minutes. It takes some time. And then once it's finished, you will see that it should be in your active section of Alt Store. And once you exit the Alt Store, again, the stupid iOS bug, if you don't see it on the home screen, what you gotta do is volume up, volume down, hold the side button, slide to power off. So power off your device and then turn it back on once it fully turns off. So basically just do a reboot and then you should see RetroArch on the home screen. Okay, now before we get into the setup of RetroArch, there is a little bit of setup that we have to do. Um, I want to cover my files and the way I have my games saved on my device because I think it's very important on how this all kind of works. And I just like the system that I've been using. Um, if you guys are subscribed, you know I like to use Delta, RetroArch, Web Arcade, PPSSPP, Dolphin, all of this stuff. And when using all these different emulators, uh, you want your games to be in a centralized location so that you can access them from multiple different emulators. So if we go into my files application, the way I have this set up is in my iCloud drive. Now I know not everyone's gonna have the available space to hold all of their retro games. So if you need to, you can still make this same type of file, but on your device instead of in iCloud. But the beauty of having it in iCloud is that I have access to all of my games on any of my devices. So from my Mac, from my iPhone, or from my iPad. And also when the new iPhone comes out, if I upgrade to a new iPhone, since all of these retro games are in my iCloud, I will of course have access to them from a brand new device whenever I get that. So that's why I like to do it in iCloud. And the way I have it set up is in iCloud Drive, I have a retro games folder. And this is where I keep everything. This is where I keep all of my games. And this is where I keep all of my BIOS and anything that's needed for any emulators. So I have my web arcade um, JSON file here for those of you that know how web arcade works. I also have all of my BIOS in a system folder here as well. Now, because with how YouTube is, I can't show you guys how to get these games, but I am gonna show you how I have all of mine set up. So it's simply just, broken up by system so Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color, Nintendo 64, Nintendo DS, so on and so forth, PSP, PlayStation 1, they're all in their own folder and that's pretty much how I have it set up. For the PS1 games as you can see I still have some that are compressed and I have some that are extracted. The extracted type here, the folder, is what's allowed into RetroArch, the compressed are not. But if we get into like Game Boy games, those are kept in the .zip format and that can be loaded up in RetroArch as is. So I just wanted to briefly cover the file system here, how I have my game set up. And then the next part is for RetroArch itself. So RetroArch, once you have it installed, you will see the RetroArch folder. This should show up after you launch the application for the first time. If for whatever reason you don't have this folder here, I would recommend just doing a reboot on your iPhone again. For some reason with RetroArch, I've noticed that sometimes you just need to reboot your iPhone for things to show up. But if we go into RetroArch, as you can see here, I have a bunch of subfolders and these are based off of systems and it's pretty much the same as I have it set up in my iCloud. You don't wanna put these games into the actual RetroArch folder, as you can see here. I could not get it to work that way. I had to put them in the main folder and that's what worked. And I'll show you guys this in action in a second. So that's how I have my games set up in my files application. Now jumping back into RetroArch, uh, there is multiple ways to set up this emulator and it depends on if you're gonna be using the touch screen controls or if you plan on using a controller. I have two different types of setups that I like to use. For touch screen, which I'll cover first, I like to keep it as you guys see here. But if I'm using my controller, I like it to be set up a different way. And I usually use a controller, so I don't normally have my RetroArch set up like this. But 
I'll show you both of them. So if you plan on using a, a controller, just check out the timestamps in the description if you guys want to jump ahead to when I cover the controller portion of this tutorial. So the first thing you guys need to do in RetroArch is if you're planning on using any cores that require BIOS, you will have to specify the BIOS folder. Now again, I can't supply the BIOS in this video or in the description or anything because of the way YouTube is. But I mean, if you guys have any questions about any of this stuff, just hit me up on Twitter. I'll gladly answer and explain how I do things uh, on, on Twitter. It's just the easiest way to do it. So if you have any questions, just ask there. But my BIOS, as shown earlier, are in a system folder in my retro folders. So right here, this is where all of my BIOS are. Now what I can do is I can copy this system folder. So we'll just do copy. And I'm not gonna actually move this because it's pretty large and it takes a few minutes, but I just copy it and then I go into the RetroArch folder and then I go into the RetroArch folder once again. And then I replaced the system folder here and all of the letters have to be lowercase. It is case sensitive, but your system folder will normally be empty but as you can see, what I did is I just deleted the folder. So just click delete. And then I pasted in the new system folder to replace it. Now that I've done that, I can specify in RetroArch where the BIOS are and they're in that folder. So to do this, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the little gear and we're gonna scroll down until we see directory. And then you can see at the top there is system slash BIOS. And then you choose that system folder just by navigating to it. So we're in the RetroArch folder, so let's go into the sub RetroArch folder. And then we just scroll down until we see system. And then you just click on use this directory because that is where all of our BIOS files are located. Now we can click the home tab at the bottom, click on configuration file and save current configuration. That will save RetroArch so that it knows where those BIOS files can be found. And what you can do is close out of RetroArch and then relaunch it. And now it has access to those BIOS files. Now, like I said, only certain cores require BIOS. For example, PlayStation does, Nintendo does not. So it depends on what you wanna play. As you use RetroArch, if you don't have a BIOS file, it will let you know it doesn't have it and that you need to specify it and that's how you can do so. Now, the next part is to load up games. For some reason, this took me so long to figure out. There's really no good YouTube tutorials on how to do this. So I figured I'll show you guys, it's pretty easy. So like I said, in my files application, in the RetroArch folder, let's back up so you can see it. So when we go into RetroArch, you can see I have subfolders with my games in them. That's all you gotta do. So we're gonna, we're gonna replace my Game Boy Color games. So in my iCloud Drive retro games, if I do, let's just do Game Boy. So we'll copy the Game Boy folder. So just do copy. And like I said, this has all of my Game Boy games in it, still in the zip form. And then we can go back to on my iPhone, go into the RetroArch folder, and I'm just gonna click on a blank spot and click paste. It's already in there, I'll just do replace. And then you just gotta give it a second to load. And as you can see, there are the Game Boy games in the RetroArch folder. So now we can go back into RetroArch and go to the, the playlist tab, which is the three lines at the bottom. And we're gonna click import content. We're gonna do directory, so scan directory. And we're gonna choose the Game Boy folder and just do scan directory. And as you can see, it is scanning all of my Game Boy games. And as it's doing this, it's gonna load up a playlist with all of the Game Boy games available. So now at this point, what we can do is we can just back all the way up. And then you will notice that there is a Game Boy playlist with all of your Game Boy games loaded up. That's pretty much how you're gonna import all of your games into RetroArch. And as you can see, if there is box art available, it will automatically download it and it looks really cool. And you can pretty much do this for every system that you want. So from here, we could do this again for Game Boy Color. We could do it for Game Boy Advance. We could do it for PlayStation, so on and so forth. If for whatever reason, and I noticed when I did this on my iPad, if when you import 
or scan your directory, if you notice that that progress bar just goes instantly and it doesn't generate a playlist, again, unfortunately, just reboot your device, volume up, volume down, hold the side button, power it off and power it back on. I had to do that on my iPad for some reason and then it would finally load the games up. And now that you've done that, you can just select on a game, you can click on run, and then it's gonna let you choose which core you want to use. So you can play around with this. I've noticed some are better than others, but generally the one at the top, it's a good suggestion. You can see that some of these are meant for like Super Nintendo. So I'm playing a Game Boy game, so I'm just gonna click on the first core option, and then we can just click run. And as you can see, it's now going to run the game. And we have our on-screen controls available, and all of this is customizable. There's a ton of stuff you can do, like having the frames per second. If you want to have that, you don't need to have it. Um, you can click the retro arc icon here. You can save your state in that game. You can load a state. You can change a bunch of options and just a ton of stuff. I don't want to go too crazy with this tutorial, but that's how you can get the games up and running on retro arc. And like I said, this is for if you're not planning on using a controller. So now I'm gonna switch over uh, to the controller and show you guys how I like to set it up when I have a controller. Okay, and the best way to get RetroArch set up for a controller is by going into RetroArch, clicking on the little gear at the bottom there. We're gonna go into the drivers option. We're gonna go ahead and click on menu and we're gonna choose XMB. Now we need to save this setup, so we're gonna click on the home tab again at the bottom if i can touch it correctly configuration file and then save current configuration and now when we exit out of retro arc and close it relaunch it you will notice that it is basically completely different looking it's the same uh, menu setup but it's in a, a much different look now the controller that i'm going to be using is the backbone controller if you guys want more information about this uh, i'll have a couple of links in the description covering controllers I like to use on iPhone and iPad. You could use the Backbone, you could use a PlayStation controller, you could use an Xbox controller. It's, I must say though, it's pretty damn sweet to use the PlayStation controller on my iPad to play PlayStation. Let me tell you how cool that is. I'll probably do a future video on the iPad for RetroArch, like I said. But now that we have the menu driver set up differently, we can plug in and set up our controller to connect with RetroArch. And now you will see that we can navigate the menus with the controller. And I think this is the best setup here for a controller. Now we're gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna set up another playlist. So I'm just gonna do scan directory. And again, same process as before if you want to import games. Uh, like I said, just watch the previous part, but we're just going to choose N64 and you can just scan that directory. You can see it will go through and scan all of the different games in that directory. And then it will create a playlist for all of those games once it finishes. So now that it's finished, we can actually just back up here all the way. And once you've imported all your games, you can see what the menu system looks like for the controller here. You can see I have Game Boy Advance. I have... Uh, Game Boy Color, regular Game Boy, we got some GameCube, N64. I can't get N64 to work in RetroArch, so if you want to play N64, I'd recommend checking out Delta. We also have Nintendo DS, regular Nintendo, we got Genesis, we got PSP. Um, I don't think I was able to get PSP working either. Uh, I think your best option for that is to just use, again, another emulator, PPSSPP, but PlayStation does work. Now we're just gonna launch a PlayStation game. Um, just make sure earlier, like I said, you have your BIOS set up like I showed you in the previous segment. If you don't have a BIOS, it won't work, but we can click on the game and we can click on run. It will prompt you to pick a core. So just make sure you pick your core, but yes, PlayStation games do work. Now, one thing I suggest to change for PlayStation is to go into the menu like I just did. And if you notice that your left um, analog stick doesn't work, you have to force it to work. So to get it working, it should be in controls, port one controls, 
and then you go to analog to digital type and choose left analog forced. That will allow this left analog to work. I noticed that mine did not work for PlayStation the first time I ran it. And also from this menu, you can see that there is a lot of different things you can change with the way that it's being emulated. Like if we back up and we go to, you know, video layout, there's options, on-screen overlay, and then if we go into options, you can go into video, and you can see that I have bumped up the resolution to 4x. I noticed that if I try to go higher than 4x, it does make RetroArch crash, at least on my 12 Pro Max. So maybe if you're on a computer, you could bump those up higher, but 4x I think looks really good. There's also lots of different settings you can change here. I don't want to go over too much stuff in this one video. This is more of a general get everything up and running kind of video. I'll probably do a more advanced video on the iPad in the future, like I said, going over all of these different things you can change with the, the core. There's just a ton of stuff. There's even shaders and stuff like that. Uh, it's really quite amazing the amount of things you can do with RetroArch. But anyways, we can just play the game. I like to minimize the controls so now it looks super clean. And we can literally play any of our favorite retro games with a controller on our iPhone. <laughs> and it's just awesome. So we'll wait for this cutscene. I think I can just click start. I can. I can go right into arcade mode. And I'm not sure how well this is going to look you know, on my camera, but in person, the graphics look pretty damn amazing, especially at the 4X resolution. I think it looks awesome. And you can see my frames per second in the upper right as well. So at the 4X resolution for PlayStation, it does handle the game amazingly well. I pretty much sit at a solid 60 frames per second, and it just very rarely dips below that. Uh, it'll sometimes dip below it at like loading screens, but never during the gameplay. So it looks amazing. It operates amazing. And this is going to be pretty much for all of the different systems that RetroArch supports. Like I said, Nintendo looks awesome. Super Nintendo. Uh, Game Boy games are really good as well. And with all the different shaders and stuff, you can really make the experience very unique with RetroArch. And it's a seriously powerful emulation application that you can have on iOS 15. So that's basically going to be it for this video, guys. That's pretty much all the basics of RetroArch on iOS 15. Again, like I said, if you guys have any questions about anything, just uh, hit me up on Twitter. I'll answer pretty much any questions that I can on Twitter. So be sure to check that out. Also, all the links for everything you guys need are down in the description. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this very long tutorial. If you did, definitely throw me a thumbs up. This has been IDM, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Later.